Welcome to the Kaiju Podcast. I'm Ralph. I'm Jorge. And today we're talking about Return of Daimajin. 1966. Weirdly 1966. How does this work? That three movies in one year? Yeah. I guess you save time by not shooting a lot of Daimajin. (laughs) Yeah. This movie made me be like, uh, man, before we get to the third Daimajin, it's going to be a while. Probably like as long as it takes Daimajin to show up in a movie. Well, I, uh, uh, I kind of figured like, okay, so Daimajin set up in the first movie, so we're good to go. We know what Daimajin right. is all now, about. Right now, Daimajin is very accessible. Yeah, you don't need to explain anything. Yeah, you got it. Just, just let's 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 get him to come and wreak havoc. Now, I didn't take a lot of notes on this movie. But I did start jotting down times. <laughs> so Times like like how long it took for things to happen? So like, let's just say like my first time stamp is the twenty three oh, minute time mark. Stamps. Yeah. So okay. the twenty three minute mark, uh, a man rings a bell and I'm like, Cool. Please wake Dimogen. Or Mygen, <laughs> I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Got it. I, I, I I've seen like that bell. The I've seen people like at like there's a Buddhist temple out here that a lot of people go and ring that bell, but mm-hmm. I've never seen like I don't know if that's the proper way to ring it where he kind of like he he does a he does a few swings before he finally hits the bell with it. Oh, yeah, maybe it's pretty because normally I think you can just do it with one swing, but I think maybe it's got he wants to get it really hard to see if he can wake up Daimajin. Spoiler alert: He can't. Okay, so <laughs> we open with people trying to escape and getting stabbed. There's a part which I, I like it when I have a movie that's in Japanese. And well, because the damage in I, I had bought the Blu-ray collection. Good investment. <laughs> and so I can watch it in English dubbed, but with subtitles. And it'll run the Japanese subtitles. So sometimes there's like a little discrepancy between what I believe is what was in Japanese versus what's in English. And sometimes uh-huh. when those are considerably different, I always like to make a note of it because it's entertaining for me. There's a part where they tell the guy, hey, let's try to get up, and that's the voiceover. But the actual caption says, buck up. Huh. Basic story, uh, there are these two villages, the Chagusa and the Nagoshi. They live on either side of this lake island, and inside the island is their god, yeah. The Majin. Yeah. <laughs> so he's moved. I like this new, I like the new setting. The new place? Yeah. They I have th- to take a boat to get to him? Yeah, I thought it looked cool. I thought it was more interesting than the mountainside in, yeah. in the first movie. Uh, I thought the set looked cool. Like the sort of cave with the giant statue and then the, the kind of lagoon coming in or the water coming in into, right. the, into the cave. Like we just watched uh, Son of Kong recently. And there's a part where Denim and the gang are in a boat going through a similar cave, but it's like right. definitely superimposed over a, a, a model. I thought this was cool. That it was an actual set, like a big giant set. And they got a lot of use out of the set, but, um, a statue, I forget what the name of the God. other group is. Was it the one with the, the, the bad guys? The, yeah. The bad guys with the symbol that looked like the rebel Alliance. Oh, the Mikoshiba. Yeah. 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 That, that's that, that, that was from the last movie, the rebel Alliance yeah. symbol. It took me a while to realize that this wasn't the last movie. Cause it all felt very similar. Are you kidding? Yeah. When I was making the movie to give to you, I actually dubbed the third movie uh-huh. and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, so, yeah, the, that there's confusion in these movies, I, I, I guess it's just the middle one is the one where Diamogen is in the middle of the water. Yeah. Boom. There you go. You remembered it. The um, <laughs> So the Mikoshiba, 
are on the mountain side are, uh, are on the other side of the mountain from one of these two the Chagusa and negotiate I don't remember now which ones and so they because these other two villages have access to that lake they have all the stuff they're, they're very prosperous and the Mikoshiba are not yeah. and they're pissed off about it so they have this whole idea that they're gonna conquer them and they're gonna do it when they have this festival because the villages come together for this festival. Okay, that's basically the story. There's also a lot of people who are leaving the Mikoshiba village as refugees, essentially, and going to these other places where they're being accepted. Uh, there's a part where they talk about how each man gave a bowl of rice in, as a gesture to the the leader of this village. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, and he looks over and there's like stacks of like, what looks like a straw. And he goes, everyone gave a bowl of rice. And, uh, and so it, it turns out it's like that the rice is put in this basket. That's completely sealed, uh -huh. which is kind of cool because this is, it is kind of cool that it's a period piece. Yeah. And it is of this kind of like feudal Japan era. Uh, and everyone's got like the shaved top head with the ponytail in the back. Yeah. Uh, it is great that you see some of the extras. It almost looked like they made a cap of that. Yeah. Because they have the 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 headband that goes across the top, uh -huh. the front. And I was like, is that like a cap? Like how great uh, as a costume idea that not everyone has to get a haircut. Only like the the the, the, front. the, the yeah the they have to get that haircut and the rest can just kind of wear that cap yeah. and fake it. It's like the later uh, Planet of the Apes movies where the guys in back are just wearing monkey masks. Rubber masks. Yeah. Totally. Totally. So their whole bit is that they kind of Trojan horse these bales that have rice in them. Uh -huh. So what they thought were these three things of rice actually were people yeah. that they, they were able to cut out. And then there's a bunch of sword fighting. A bunch. Yes. They're looking for Juro in Nagoshi. There's a lot of uh, I, I don't, there's a lot of like random laughter by the bad guy. He's like, "Why is everybody so excited?" Ah, ha, ha, ha. I like the bad guy. I had this. I, I wrote a note. I said the problem when your kaiju is a god is that they take a long time to show up. Oh, because King man. Caesar took a long time too. Well, I remember in the first Imogen, the bad guys start messing with the statue and then it starts bleeding i think right they, they the there's like the head spike and stuff and right all that was really cool and this one they start chiseling them pretty quickly but then they start loading them up with dynamite yeah there's a great part where a guy is gonna go and he, he, he starts attacking the statue but he's clearly not hitting it yeah he's just going uh, i'm pretending to be like uh, and then the old guy gets hit, and he kind of turns and jumps into the water. Yeah, but what is great is they so they so they they blow up Dimogen, and the head pops off and lands right there in that little lagoon area. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's crazy. And then at the 32 minute mark, <laughs> this is the, that's where we're at in this movie. Still no Dimogen. This is like red lightning hits the water where the head landed, head, like the head landed. And I'm like, okay, cool. This is it. We're half hour in. This lightning is going to wake up Dimogen, and he's going to start jacking stuff up. Uh, but he doesn't. No, he does not. He does not. Uh, this movie very... has Kojiro Hongo uh, of the Gamera movies as uh -huh. Juro, who's kind of like the, the main lead in this. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that it's all part of the uh, the Daiye um, studio mm -hmm. troupe. There's a thing where he escapes by jumping into a well. Because uh -huh. there's a secret passage at the bottom of that well, and I was like, "That's a lot to put your trust in that such a thing would exist." But maybe that's how wells are created. But then it wouldn't be secret. There was something earlier where there was like a hidden, another hidden like doorway that led down, and a couple guys went through, and then the third guy dumped a bunch of rocks on it. That was fantastic. The escape yeah. route. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're in the big fight where, like, they send him through and then he does, like, a cave-in that that's set up yeah. for that exact purpose. Yeah. I think that was that was a pretty cool thing. Yeah, but one guy has to stay behind. And then that guy, like, was able to take out a few of the guys, but... Yeah, he's... People get... No chance. Yeah, people get sliced and diced 
ton in this movie. It's essentially right. the whole movie is these two sword clans fights. back and forth, just sword yeah. fighting. And then at the end, they have guns. Like They rarely uh, use the guns before that. Then they find Ikikaku, uh-huh. and he had a stone sticking out of his chest. <laughs> I had Ikikaku once. Uh, that, that that was that was great, and I like the ominousness that it was like oh. it's just a stone, but it was yeah. driven through his chest. It was pretty great. Yeah, that was another thing. <laughs> was there was like I was like okay, so Diamond's been blown to bits. Maybe when I saw that stone in his chest, like I was like okay, maybe all the bits and pieces are gonna start killing off these bad guys one at a time. Oh, that'd be cool. And then oh, be like man. a Voltron, and then they start forming into yeah. Diamond. Yeah. Oh, that'd be amazing. But that didn't happen. Um, it did not happen. <laughs> uh, at the 40-minute mark, a boat gets sucked into the ocean. And I'm assuming that was Daimajin, but we don't see Daimajin. And, yeah, that was the 45-minute mark. And so at <laughs> the 49-minute mark, my note was, uh, this guy has a stone in his chest. Uh, will Daimajin even be whole? <laughs> will we even see Daimajin as a full creature? I wasn't sure about that. And then they go so far as they even break the bell. Oh, I kind of like that part. I like yep. the part where they, they, they knock the bell down and they drop it over the side of the cliff. But as it's falling down the cliff, it's ringing like with each time yeah. it hits. And I'm like, oh, that's definitely going to wake damage in. <laughs> we're 54. We're 54 <laughs> minutes into this. Here we go. Here he comes. You guys are in trouble now. But we still have six more minutes. Uh, that so, and then they get all the uh, the insolence, you know, the people who were basically, uh, uh-huh. and they are going to burn them all at the stake. Yeah. Okay. This like, w- there was something similar in the last one where there was a guy hanging on a on a pole, and Diamond Jin comes and pulls that guy. Oh, off the pole. right. So right. So I was like, okay, because I remember the puppet person, because the Diamond Jin model is a cool scale. Like, it's not super gigantic where you have tiny puppet people. Right. But it's like a smaller, he's probably like 30 feet tall, maybe. And so when he holds a person, it's a bigger puppet person. So I remember for that from last time. And so this is a 60 Were minute Were they mark. crucified? I think so. Okay. But I think Daimajin did the same thing where they pulls him out of the ground. But this is like the 60 minute mark. And this movie's only like an hour and 15 minutes. Right, but when I saw her hanging there, like on the on the cross thing, I was like, okay, this is just like the first one. We're definitely getting damage in, and this is when he shows up with 15 minutes left in the movie. So, right at this point, I wrote, uh, you know what, damage needs is a summoning song. Yeah, I th- it almost felt like she song. was. They had a song they'd sing. He'd show up much sooner. But it felt like she was ready to sing. I thought she was going to, like, definitely when she was up there getting burnt at the stake. No, I, she just had her like magic a... tears. Oh, my God. <laughs> the ending is they say get more wood because it's not, she's not burning quickly enough. Wait, so and she is a witch? in Japanese, he says pour some oil. Yeah. And I'm like, here he comes. And then finally in parentheses. <laughs> what exactly is he parting open? Oh yeah, there's a lot of like <laughs> kind of like Ten Commandments quality when, when Diamond's in, he oh, starts yeah. partying the sea. But first, first he's splitting open like uh, I don't know cracks and mountain crevices. Like what? Well, I don't know exactly what's. It, it, they're just kind of nondescript. No, we don't know exactly the, t- the the place exactly that we're in, but just stuff's cracking open when yeah. Diamond finally starts showing up. I thought it looked cool. When he was standing in front of the parted seas, like it's definitely a comp shot, but there's something about that imagery. Like if they were to do it now, it would look amazing. Yeah, it's definitely, but it's, it's yeah, it's totally like, uh, you know, Charlton Heston, Ten Commandments. <laughs> yeah. Also, when she was sitting there last and her eyes were closed and like the wind's blowing and all that stuff, it felt, it reminded me a lot, had that kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark feel. Yeah. When they opened the ark, uh-huh. I feel like when he broke through the wall, uh-huh. it didn't go quite as great as they wanted it to. I was still, I still like that because I'm like, okay, here we go. He's here. I remember the last movie we had some great destruction when he finally did show up. Right. And there was a lot of great comp shots. There was a lot of great model shots. And when he knocked down, there's an first obscure wall, shot of damaging. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> when he knocked down that first wall, which was like made up of like just a ton of like stone pebbles or whatever, just kind like, of precariously like held yeah. together from with each other's weight. I was like, okay, this is gonna be cool. That wall's coming down, but then yeah. when it does, the other side of the wall is like this really bad comp shot. And I was like, oh, no, the comp shots aren't as good as the first one. And, uh, like, none of the comp shots looked as good as the first one. Cause I there's thought- this thing where it almost looked like there's, there's, they, had, they had almost, like, a full-size Diamogen, but it's just a statue. They can't do anything with it. It's uh-huh. probably, maybe, maybe it was a repurposed of the Diamogen statue that was the first movie where he was just, uh-huh. like, a still statue. Yeah. But, or, so they, they would cut to that and do stuff and just kind of, like, kind of like as if they were like pushing it on wheels so you would kind of like glide through the scene sometimes yeah and then they would do the shots with the one that actually had an actor Mm -hmm. and they didn't do the thing as much with his face that i liked from the first one where he's got like kind of the stone face of the statue and then he moves his hand across it and the face comes like i think they only really did that once they did once to start and once to finish yeah um i (laughs) I wrote Operation Grappling Hook Backfires. <laughs> it was great. I loved it, though. Yeah. It was cool. They got him. They immediately <laughs> were able to get his legs and neck, but he just like, oh, I'm just going to keep on walking. <laughs> and, he just... and our heroes keep following him, almost like, hey, I want to see how this turns out. Yeah. What's funny is like, he's there to protect those people, but he doesn't have any problem messing up their place. Mm-mm. He like takes the hook and he just like shoves it through a building and pulls down the roof, like he doesn't care. Yeah, it's like what, what happens when you watch a Diamogen movie is you just start wishing for stuff to happen that yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah, it's like oh, he should pick up that gum powder, eat it, and then burp an explosion. <laughs> the we get a couple of good shots of the lady puppet when he pulls her out of the ground and sets her down. Because when he sets her down, that's like one of the few shots we get of the giant puppet hand. Yeah. Which there was more of in the first one. I remember yeah. the remember when the bad guy in the last movie was in that room and the hand just kind of snuck in behind him without him noticing. Right. Yeah. So, But there's like less of that. So it was like we get 15 minutes of damage in as opposed to 10, but the 15 minutes are like way less quality. Uh, yeah, they blew all the... They're like, oh, we got we got this thing. Well, you better get three movies out of it. <laughs> Shit. And they blew so many in that first one. And I'm pretty sure some of the some of the shots of the models were redone from the first one. Good chance. Or holdovers. <sighs> he throws a big rock at the guy, and he crushes the guy. And there's even blood on like the side of the rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was kind of a dumb ending for him, but I, I like, yeah, I like Diamogen. He like sends fire from like between his legs. That was out of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> he just kind of squirted a fireball through his legs. And okay. the guy's escaping and he's climbing up the ship's mast. Instead of jumping in the water. And he I was like, like That's somehow slips and ends up crucified. Yeah. Like, whoa, I'm so tangled. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, he could have he jumped in the water. Uh, he didn't. And I was like, why is he trying to climb the mast? And then when it ended, I'm like, oh, okay, it's supposed to be like he's the one that is crucified now. I feel like Dimogen could have probably would have put him up there. Because in the last one, didn't Dimogen put a dude? He put a dude on the post, on the, the crucifixion post. And didn't he pull the spike out of his head and like stick him to it or something? Does that sound yeah. familiar? Yeah. So I feel like Diamond, they, they wanted to make Dimogen put him on there. But they couldn't figure a way to make it look right. I forgot about that part. So it's like an eye for an eye, like because they, you know, they're the ones that like pulled the spike out of his head and started bleeding, and then he stuck it in them. So I feel like maybe they that he has to end up the same way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they couldn't figure out a way, and they're sort of like just kind of climb this thing and then like fall into place. I can figure out a way. Can you? Can you do that? Yeah. One of the things that cracked me up is once Dimogen came in and saved the day, all the captives behind the bars uh, just kind of like slipped through the bars and came out. Like they could have come through the bars at any the time. The whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it was like the Smurfs or like Pinocchio when they're inside a jail and you're like, they can clearly fit through, but, you know, they don't want to animate. Yeah. Or like yeah. the kids in uh, that Gamera movie with the uh, <laughs> the squid. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's like a Zucker's Abrams movie where they're like there's like captives and they're they're trying to get out and they're trying to reach the key. It's out of out of distance and the guy comes out, it goes squeezes through the bars, grabs the key, comes back in and then unlocks the door. That's great. Yeah. Uh yeah, he picks up around my look at my notes here. They're they're pretty much we've we've talked about all this stuff. Um a short kaiju punch. Squirts squirts the fireball. Uh the 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 rock kind of um Death was kind of weak, yeah. Because the because the first the like I said the first one was when the the kind of big henchman guy gets squashed by the hand, and this one like the rocks like cut away, like it cut away too much where you don't see it actually happening. Yeah, you see him throw the rock and then it cuts to the rock with blood on it, which is fine. Yeah, but it's like yeah, it's like it's if like, he smashed down there, it's a, it's a, yeah, yeah. Uh, the blood gets smeared up the side. Yeah, uh, and then Dimogen turns into water. Uh, uh, disappears. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Now he's a water guy, I guess. And then he like he turns into he turns. I thought he was turning into ice, but then he kind of like dissolves into the water, and then that's pretty much the ending. That'd I... be great if there were two Dimogens, and he's the one that turns into water stuff, and then the other one is the one that turns into animals. They, could they both squirt fire out of their legs? It's a very, it's a very <laughs> stretch to oh, work in the Wonder, Wonder Twins. Twins. <laughs> and then the third movie is like that monkey damage in. <laughs> Gleek. Uh, speaking of the third movie, what are It'll the chances? Well. We're not, th- not going to get do it anytime soon. What are the chances it's the same? That he's not going to show up to the end? It's It's just two samurai clans fighting, and then Daimajin shows up in the last couple minutes. Well, let's see. Uh, well, maybe it'll be four because this one was three. Each time they add a new clan, I don't know. I bet. I feel like yeah. yeah. There was no story. There was nothing to it. It was just these guys battling back and hey, forth. Hey, we're gonna. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, there wasn't. Yeah, I think the first one kind of had like a kid with his storyline. I remember him running through the woods and like seeing weird images of like trees grabbing him and there's like that picture that oh, right. of a there's vulture that. and stuff and like a goat um the kid in this but movie it's the same kind of thing like Diamond's like a hero of the oppressed when he decides to show up he could have helped a lot sooner because they ring that bell but uh, the whole thing is the whole i mean i really really want to like Diamond. i think as a character he looks cool and his the idea of him just murdering the bad guys like hardcore is cool he has no sympathy for bad guys he's just there to like destroy them he's just like this yeah like, i like angel it. Of death. And i like he's he's yeah he's like a stoic creature he's silent he just goes and you know destroys and then goes away but yeah just there's just not enough of him nothing happens and i don't i'm like do i feel like I want him to fight something. I feel like, yes, but what and how would you fit that into this kind of storyline that they sort of pigeonhole themselves into? It's, yeah. Because a lot of, like, this, uh, I don't know. The scale of him is cool. I like that he's not super gigantic. I like that he can interact with humans more, which means... Like all of the deaths are more personal. It's not like Godzilla where he just like steps on like five people at once. You know, he can like pick up a person and just like mess them up. Yeah, like, that's cool. But it's just too late. So yeah, it'll probably be a long time before we get to the wrath of Diamond. Yeah, Man. we need we need a uh, we need this to wear off. Yeah. And and as to kind of forget a little bit, being like, going, oh yeah, that's yeah. kind of what happens. We gotta do it though. We gotta we gotta complete it. I'm surprised I remember as much as the first one as I do, but I mean, when there's so little that happens, you kind of latch on to like the kind of good stuff. Oh, there's also like a newer TV series, right? I think so. I think 2010. Interesting. But I, yeah, I don't know. Well, if it's a TV show, he's probably going to have to show up a lot sooner. He shows up in the 12th episode. <laughs> oh, man. Like a mini series? Yeah. It's like uh, Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. You are going to have dinosaurs on your dinosaur tour, right? 
<laughs> he looks so cool. Like if you just do a Google image search of Diamogen, it's like, oh, every single picture is badass. Yeah. And he just like I was really excited when that stone was just in that dude's chest and I'm like, All right, cool, let's do this. Yeah. The stone in the dude's chest might have been my favorite part. I mean yeah. pre destruction. Uh just I was like it was so ominous and so like yeah. going, Oh But uh this movie's probably more for boat enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many boats. You know, just watching them paddle those boats, I'm like, how does that work? How they, is there like a special way of moving those paddles back and forth? But I just didn't. I just, there was nothing. There was there was like little entertainment value. So I was just thinking about the boats. But yeah, because yeah, because I almost feel also like if if you like this time period as far as like in the history, uh, yeah. there's better movies of this time period to, that 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 talk about this stuff too, probably. And have just about as much damage in it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Oh man, it's it's a it's just a bummer. It's just a real bummer. Yeah. I mean, it's such a great concept, but I mean, a kaiju kind of monster thing in samurai times, right? I feel like King Caesar would fit in this era. He's kind of has like he looks like one of those yeah. statues, like. If there was a Diamogen versus King Caesar, it would be great. And, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to go write fanfic, but I feel like... Yeah, there's also, like, there's no chance that, like, there's going to be another thing to fight, say, from just hurting people. Or, like, last time on our last episode, we were talking a bit about Manda, and Manda looks like kind of a classic uh, Japanese dragon, or I guess... yeah. Yeah, it's like a Chinese dragon. Chinese dragon. And I was like, See, something like kind of a more ancient looking monster would be awesome. Right. Or like, oh, a, yeah. Or like if you saw like the Mummy 3, where they had like the terracotta warriors versus like yeah. Yeti, like Yetis and stuff. Like something like that. Something that felt more sort of mystical or ancient or, you know. But I mean, you can't just. It's going to be the same. I know the third one Wait, is going to be the on. same. Are you saying in the Mummy 3, the Terracotta Warriors fought Yetis? Yeah, I think so. I don't remember this. Maybe I didn't see this movie. Jet Li was in it. He played the uh, the Dragon Emperor. Oh, shoot. You didn't see it? You might not have seen it. Because, guess, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil Mummy 3 just to see if you've seen it or not. But there's like a King Ghidorah in it. Oh, I didn't see this. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, if you do a quick here, I'm going to do a quick search. But if you do a quick search for mummy, let's see here, mummy. I'm surprised I didn't see it. Did, I just get, did, did, did Scorpion King just bum me out? I like the Scorpion King standalone movie. I didn't like the Scorpion King and Mummy Return when he showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Scorpion King okay. as an effect. Tomb of the Dragon Emperor Yeti. <laughs> A pretty, oh yeah, there's Yetis in it. Cool. They look. They don't look terrific. Okay. I'm just gonna send you the link because Tomb of the Dragon Emperor Dragon. Yeah, it's like a King Ghidorah. Wow. I'm I have send, not seen this. Dude, I'm gonna send you this picture. Oh, it's. I'm not saying it's a great movie by any stretch oh, I of the see imagination. It. Oh, he's huge. I yeah. don't. That was in the the when when I when I clicked on the. The link you sent me, if you just scroll down a little further, he shows up right there. Wow. It's, I, I don't remember hating it, <laughs> but Rachel Weiss did it, wasn't in it, and it was someone else. I forget who, but they switched out the actors. There was a The Mummy animated series? I guess so. Yeah, apparently the dragon showed up there first. Yeah, it's totally a three-headed. It looks like King Ghidorah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you come across it, I mean, it's. I mean, if you like those mummy movies, I really liked the second one until the the CGI scorpion rock came out. Oh my out. gosh, I didn't know there were three Scorpion King movies. Oh, I didn't know that either. Holy crap! I think the first one was fine, but it was kind of it was, it was more fun. And the rock was four it. Scorpion King movies. Oh, who's? Hang on, it's like a different actor. Oh my gosh, five. Are they still Whoa. making Scorpion, scorpion King movies? King four. Quest for Power, Scorpion King, Book of Souls, 
the fifth installment in the Scorpion King series, the eighth in the Universal Mummy franchise. When when did that last Scorpion King movie come out? 2018! What? Wait, hold on. The Scorpion King movie came out this year? Or is it coming out? Who plays the Scorpion King? I'm confused and excited. There's a picture of a Blu-ray case that says Book of Souls. Zach McGowan. Maybe it's in production? October 23rd. It comes out in a month. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. It just came out. When does this show... When did I say this episode was going up? (laughs) It just came out last month. That's crazy. They must be popular still. Wow. That's great. I mean, it makes me happy. Like, you know... If you're a Scorpion King fan, cool. It probably is. I could I could see this doing well. Uh, like overseas? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of makes me happy. Because <laughs> they try to like reboot the Mummy series with with uh, the Tom Cruise one. Oh, it's, it's like, produced by Mike Elliott. Who's Mike Elliott? Mike Elliott was a producer for Corman for a long time. In fact, when okay. I was an intern at Corman, he was a producer... He produced Casper and Wendy, which is the movie that I did extra work to get my SAG card, and a movie called Raven's Ridge, which was a heist movie that I was in where I get shot with an arrow and step in a bear trap. What? (laughs) Wait, hold on, hold on. (laughs) I've never really looked at your credits or your IMDb page. You're in Casper and Wendy? Uh, as, like a as a background as a performer, background? you you see me very little. I feel because like at the time I had this long curly hair, I, I I I think I stood out, so I don't think they were able to like place me in a bunch of places. Uh-huh. But it was kind of like as a favor because I knew them and I was an intern at their place for uh-huh. so long that uh, they helped me get my SAG card by giving me the extra work that you need to get your eligibility. And then what was the other movie? So then the other movie was after Mike left, uh, the two Mikes that were working for Concord New Horizons, they left to kind of form their own company. They wanted to get uh, so, like get something. Oh, I think also Rob Kirshner was also – he was like the development – like the three, like the head of the studio, the head of development, and the head of production at Concord, they kind of left and formed their own little company. Oh. And so they wanted to get something out right that like they could get out quickly to start generating money for the business. It was called Raven's Ridge. And it's this movie that's like we're like a bunch of like bank robbers or are we a bank robber? Well we well, maybe it's an armored car heist, but uh we we pull off this robbery and we take off and we we go hide the uh the money in the woods. And then when we're going to, I think, retrieve it, we kind of get hunted down by a mountain man who uh, ends up killing us. Wow. Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds up my alley. I like I like Corman movies. There's some yeah, so out there. This, yeah, that was, that was, it was fun. Cool. Awesome. That sounds way more interesting than Return of Dimogen, <laughs> which goes without saying it does not break our top five. I mean, I don't like being negative much, but I'm wondering if we were to put a bottom five or create a bottom five where Dimogen would fit. But I feel like in I, the bottom five, <laughs> oh man, like, you know what I mean? Like, what would we, I don't even know. I wouldn't feel like relegating anything to the bottom five of, of I mean, it'd have to be a really bad movie. I don't think we've seen anything where I'm just like, this movie needs to just go away, <laughs> but it's it's just the, these movies are just kind of more of a bummer. It's, yeah, it's, it's there must be people a, out there who love these movies. It's just a tease. I mean, I I said it last time. If you were to sit someone down and say, "Hey, let's watch this samurai movie," and then all of a sudden in the last couple minutes a giant statue shows up and beats everybody up, that'd probably be a great experience or at least a different experience. But I feel like this one, the the main samurai story isn't actually compelling. I feel like the last one may have had a little bit more interest, like it was more interesting, but I don't know. It's a it's a big bummer. There are people who love it. Oh, I'm sure. I, I just found this. Any love for Damogen? Haven't heard of them, but I'll be enjoying this later today. <laughs> and there are people who say that they do. Yeah. I mean, the character I like, but that's about it. That's about it. He's vicious. That's That's what I do like about him. 
But I think I'm done talking about this movie. Let's talk about our next episode. We're gonna we're gonna notch another Gamera off of our list. It's gonna be Gamera versus Zigra. Zygra? We'll find out. Z I G R A. I'm excited. Well, it looks like a shark, and... a flying shark. Oh yeah, I gotta look up what the fuck is this guy looks like. He looks like a, a flying shark. He's great. Oh, so pointy. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we'll probably get some Gamera blood. He's going to slice him as he flies by him in the middle of the air. I'm excited for it. It's good to move on. <laughs> we'll, Got it. we'll see. We'll, we'll see when we hit the next, uh, the, the next damage. And, um, but until the next episode, go to kaijupod.com. There you can check out our, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And, uh, other than that, uh, yeah, maybe go over to iTunes, leave a, a review. Not necessarily on this episode, but the podcast as a whole. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, until next time, I'm just going to sit around and wait for Diamogen to show up. I'm going to go and look at the Japanese version of Terra (laughs) Megakatsuma. I did that last time. It was great. (laughs) Way better. (laughs) 